Good afternoon. You're listening to the Blaine Solo Show, and this is a special Facebook Live edition um, because we're not on at on our ordinary time, which is Wednesdays at 9 a.m. This way, though, you can watch any time you see it on Facebook, and we hope you'll catch this show featuring three of uh, my favorite local actors and performers. And they are, we'll go kind of left to right here. It's Julie Wharton, and Julie, you can wave to all your fans and friends in Facebook world. And uh, John Hall is in the middle there, and um, Trinity Keel. And what we're going to be talking about is a, a show that um, Julie's directing and John and uh, Trinity are in, and that's um, Birds of North America. And before we talk about this show, I just want to give a little background for the folks who don't know the three of you. Julie, you and I have talked on our show before, but I'll start with John. And uh, John, the question I always ask, as a kid, you grew up where? I grew up in Johnson City, Tennessee. Okay, and when you were a kid growing up in Johnson City, Tennessee, did you always know you wanted to be an actor? Absolutely not. Okay, so what did you want to be as a kid? Oh gosh, all sorts of different things. Uh, paleontologist, uh, politician, uh, lots of different things, but it wasn't until Oh, I'd say late high school, early college that I that I really started um, thinking and thinking about acting and really enjoying performing. And what was your first acting role? Oh, gosh. My first acting role uh, was in uh, high school. I think I was in uh, in the crowd of Dark of the Moon. OK. And the reason I ask you this and Trinity, I'm going to ask you the same question is I have this great idea. And I think I've shared it with Julie for a local fundraiser. And what I want, John, is everybody do their very first role. You know, you wouldn't have to do the whole thing. You could just do, you could be in the crowd again. But I assume, do we have a videotape of that performance somewhere? Uh, fortunately, we do not. Okay. But wouldn't that be a great idea? You know, you name the theater, but everybody would just do their very first role. And so we'll, we'll fast forward in a little bit, but I'll ask Trinity the same question. When did you decide you want to become a, an actor, Trinity? Uh, I don't know. I was a kid. I think I spent a lot of time reading and I would read out loud to my mom and she was like, oh, you should look at acting. And I just didn't look back from there. And same question. Do you remember your first role? I, I believe my first role for like an audience was at ACT summer camp in 2000. And I played the butcher in Aesop's fairy like fables. OK. And just still remember the role? You still remember the part? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, keep in mind, I, I've mentioned it to ACT, I've mentioned it to Hart, you name it, but some theater is going to pick up that idea. Yeah, everybody will just do, you know, as a fundraiser, I just think that'd be a lot of fun. So, Trinity, fast forward from ACT, the summer camp. So, is that when the acting bug kind of bit you? Yeah, pretty much. I don't think I paid too much attention as a kid. I was homeschooled, so it was kind of my extracurricular activity. I wasn't thinking about, like, doing it for a living or anything like that. I probably really got bitten with it with my first, like, the first role I did that we toured with, that we traveled around with, which was a production of Ella Mocenary. And I did that on and off for like a year or so. And that was when I was like, oh, yeah, I kind of want to do this. And so you've done this, you've kind of done this every, ever since? Pretty much. And the thing that always amazes me about you, Trinity, is I think I've seen you in certainly, if not every local theater, just about a lot of them. You know, it's just... Yeah. I don't know how you do it, but you go from uh, Monford to NC Stage to, you know, this production you're going to be doing with John, and it's, uh, it keeps you pretty busy, though. You know, it's... Um, uh, yeah, you're pretty lucky. He's yeah, just and, that good. <laughs> yeah, she is, Julian, and we're very lucky to, to see um, Journey in so many productions. And same thing, too, with John, that I guess I've only known you the last couple of years, but I followed you in a bunch of local productions. I always get a kick out of you. Same thing, too. You go from different theater to different theater? Uh, pretty much, pretty much. And, oh, I, I was, um, back in the 90s, I had a theater for young audiences at the Diana Wortham Theater for about seven years, Mockingbird Theater Productions. But in the last five years or so, I started uh, bringing, I brought Mockingbird back, but doing more adult fare. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. But let me just turn to Julie, the same thing too. I've known you, Julie, now as a director in several plays. Uh, had you been an actor also? Yes. Um, when I discovered theater, I really wanted to be an actor, and I did theater and dance in college. But 
I well, I was pretty sure that that business of auditioning constantly and being rejected a lot would uh, really butcher my self-esteem. I, I'm a thin-skinned, and I realized I probably didn't have the drive that I saw some of my colleagues who I knew would be successful have. Uh, so I started looking for other ways to to be involved in theater. And the first time I directed, other than in college, I felt like, oh, this is what I was really supposed to be doing all along. And somebody told me, or not somebody, uh, directors will sometimes tell me, though, the other nice thing about it is you don't have to memorize the parts, you know, uh, <laughs> let, let John and, and Trinity do all the work, but you just have to kind of, well, I don't know if that's true, but um, so you got into no, directing. Certainly. Yeah. I don't have to do the memorization. There are other director jobs that are less fun for me than the in rehearsal work, you know, the scheduling, coming up with the schedule and all that sort of thing isn't super fun, but and let's talk about let's talk then about this play that that you're working with with uh, John and Trinity. So this is now John. This is produced by this name of the the outfits producing it. It's it's Mockingbird Theater Productions. That that's basically me. Okay. No, it's very exciting because I think it's the first time. Then I'll actually see a specific uh, Mockingbird production. Where I've seen did you see else. Red? I can't remember. Did oh, I did. See Red? With um, yeah, you you were involved in that as well. Well, uh, yeah, I was the lead in, in Red, and that was Mockingbird Theater Productions. You saw it at 35 Below, or did no, you see it at... I, I saw it with Mark Cameron. Um, oh, no, 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 no. That he did Just, it. Oh, I wish, okay. I, I wish I'd seen you in... That, that's that's a little small role, huh? Red? Uh, that was quite challenging. Oh, but I can see you being in, in that role. So talk about this play, then. So you had the idea that you want to bring this to the local area, the, the one you're doing now? Yes, uh, I had done a stage reading of it uh, early in the pandemic, and uh, we didn't get a chance to delve too deeply into it. But the character I play, who's named John, uh, same as me, uh, he is a very um, flawed and uh, complex character. And I had a lot of areas with that character that I connected with, and it really made me want to delve more deeply. And then when the Black Mountain Center for the Arts was um, accepting proposals for shows, I decided to uh, propose that show and they accepted it. Okay. But the only difference this time is though, so you're playing against type though, because you're not a flawed guy, you know, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm like so this is, well, it must be tough for you to make that stretch. But I guess that's Julie's yeah. job. You have to bring him out, even though he's not a, a flawed guy, Julie? Correct. Is that tough? <laughs> not, not John. So I don't know the play, I have to be honest with you. Uh, I think a lot of people don't. And what's very exciting, John, that you bring it to the area, and, and I think the Black Mountain Center is starting to do some of this as well. It's really cool bringing a show we haven't seen. And so I guess for my benefit, and if you can share just kind of maybe the Reader's Digest version of what the play's all about. You go ahead, Julie. Okay, if you would. Um, well, it's obviously it's two characters, a father and grown daughter watching birds in the father's backyard over the course of a decade. So each scene is a year later. And the play focuses on their attempts to connect. Um, sometimes they're in conflict. They are wanting to have a close relationship and understand each other. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. But there's also uh, the, the context of all of their interactions is nature out in the backyard watching birds and when things get tense somehow magically the birds save them by distracting them and providing a reset um, or when they really need some some way to control their tempers or or their upset they grab those binoculars and uh, look for for something else to throw their attention towards. And because of that presence of nature in their relationship, the play becomes also a commentary on what's happening in our climate and the warming temperatures and the changing bird species and the danger of us losing nature 
which is so critical to human existence. And so, Trini, I'll ask you, I guess in terms of preparing for the play, so um, had you been, in your life, had you been a birder or a, a bird watcher? No, not at all. I mean, other than casually knowing what a cardinal and a blue jay is and noticing them when I see them, not even a little bit. So now are you learning more about, have you learned more about birds as a result? Yeah, weirdly enough, it took like just the the things we talk about. I mentioned a chipping sparrow or a dark stick pin on a breast. And so you have to Google what that is so you know what you're talking about when you say it. And it takes you down a rabbit hole, a lot of information. And that must be really cool. So as you're going down that rabbit hole, uh, when sometimes when you're walking now, do you sometimes see a bird and, and look at it differently? Oh, I try. I still like, I really can't tell. We call them LBJs in the play, little brown jobs, which is all the little brown sparrows. And I feel like I see all of them and now I can tell that they're different, but I can't <laughs> tell you what they are. <laughs> and John, I'll ask you the same thing too. Had you been like a nature guy walking around looking at birds? Well, I've always really enjoyed songbirds. And I have never really studied them that closely, but I've always had feeders in my yard. And I've always tried to uh, set aside time to, uh, to learn about the birds that come to my bird feeder and to chase away any cats that come around. Okay. Now, is this uh, as a result, though, of the play? Are you becoming more into birding and becoming a bird guy? Absolutely. In fact, I've looked into uh, some birding, possible birding excursions as well. Oh, really? That's right. Yeah. Okay. But you know, Blaine, another thing that I have really learned from this play is, uh, and I think, you know, it's a, it's a true statement that art can heal us in a way. Because um, I have an adult daughter, and she's currently living overseas. And um, by studying this character, and by uh, seeing the ways that he falls short, I'm le I've learned ways in which to better communicate with my daughter. Okay, well, it would really be cool when, when she comes back to actually go on a bird watching exposition, you know, thing with her, it'd be fun. I sure will. And mm -hmm. I'm very grateful that Trinity's going to be in the play, but I was wondering out loud, you know, because I've seen your daughter as, as a performer and she's very mm -hmm. talented. So I was going to ask, you know, that it, it's, it's nice to not, to play with Trinity, but it'd probably be interesting to act with your daughter in this too. This would be a great play for the two of you. Well, actually, when we did the stage oh. reading, she was playing my daughter. Yeah. And same thing too, Julia, I'll ask you, has this play made you more aware of birds and, and aware of them and looking at them? Well, um, I think you're aware, Blaine, that I lived overseas for a lot of years because my husband was foreign service. And my awareness of birds luckily, um, happened when we were in Southern Africa and being out on safari, if the, the exotic megafauna didn't show up, you know, oh gosh, no elephants. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the birds were always there. And in that part of the world, they're spectacular. You know, they're so many different sizes and colors and shapes, and they were really fascinating to watch. So that was kind of where my interest in birds came to be and it's carried over back here in the United States. We, I love watching the birds around our house uh, or out in the woods. They're harder to see out there, of course, but um, I think that humans have to be very intentional about watching birds if they're interested. It's not something that can be a casual interest. If you really want to be a bird watcher, you have to be patient and observant. And I think that that applies to the whole business of having a healthy relationship too, that being intentional and being patient and observant and all of that. Well, what I love also about the fact that you and John and Trinity bring this to the area is that this is something that had not been on my radar screen, you know, so, um, you know, it's kind of exciting to see something you don't see ordinarily, especially, I'm, I'm trying to think out loud, Julian, you probably know this better than I would. I don't know if I've ever seen, I, I don't think Birdman, well, Birdman of Alcatraz, the movie may count, you know, as a, a movie about birds. But other than that, I don't know too many other plays, are there, about birds? I, I don't know, you know, so it's, it's what's exciting to me, John, is that, it opens my eyes to something that I wasn't aware of, you know, so that they're actually 
birds out there and people talk about them and, and look at them. So that's the question I'll ask you. Can you enjoy the play even if you have no knowledge about birds? Oh, absolutely. And, and truly, nature and the birding are kind of the vehicle for the two people, the father and the daughter, to interact. And it's a, it's a I don't know, Blaine, uh, if you have had a complex relationship with somebody else, but sometimes you have to find certain avenues or certain paths to that person. And for these two, birding is one of those paths to come together. And so even though we do mention birds and, and talk about birds some, it's really more about that human relationship and that, that, that attempt to connect and that difficulty at the same time to connect. John, for the benefit of the folks who want to see the show, let's talk a little bit about, first of all, where's it going to be again? So it's going to be at the Black Mountain Center for the Arts, which is right there on State Street, uh, two doors down from the Dripolator Coffee House and right next to the Swannanoa Valley Museum. And um, they, about a year ago, they just, they created a new, uh, a new approach for theater. So instead of producing their own theater, they sent out uh, they asked for proposals from people in the community to then to bring their own shows in uh, similar to 35 below at ACT. And so we have uh, they built a season of people bringing in shows and uh, we're a part of that. And I'm really thrilled. And so you can uh, get tickets at Black Mountain, Black Mountain Arts dot org. I don't know if you have to do the WWW anymore, no, but it's WWW. So. Yeah dot blackmountainarts.org that's where you'd be able to get tickets okay and the dates of it again please so it opens on may 13th friday may 13th and it runs that friday and saturday at 7 p.m and that sunday at 2 p.m and then the next weekend friday saturday 7 p.m and it closes on may 22nd at the 2 p.m show a nice thing also we can tell folks about the theater. So first of all, a little lovely theater, very nice, you know, place It is, very too. intimate. And also you're in uh, Black Mountain, you know, which is great. There are lots of places to go for a nice dinner beforehand. And, and, and parking is great there too, just right in the back end of their parking and, you know, on the street, plenty of parking. So people are in for a nice experience if they see the show. And to just get you, the three of you back to rehearsal, I'll just ask um, one other question. And that has to do with future plans. So Trinity, after this is over, what, is, what else is on your agenda? Do we have anything set? Um, well, I'm not like in anything else. The Mumford Amphitheater season is about to start and I work backstage for that. So I'm there at all of those, all of those performances. Um, I will be making a like a special appearance. The last two uh, productions of As You Like It one of our actors has a prior commitment, so I'm stepping in for somebody those last two weekends. And well, then I'm backstage again, so. Well, then I also saw, I was very impressed. You now are doing a lot of costuming too? Or no, doing... I don't technically do costuming for plays. I basically, I have, my job is, I'm the costume conservator for Montford Park players. I'm in charge of renting them out and oh, gotcha. making sure they stay in good condition. But okay. I don't design costumes. Okay, I thought you were in your spare time, but you'll you'll be <laughs> no. busy with the Monford season. John, same thing too. Do, we, do you have anything on the agenda? Uh, I don't have any theater scheduled uh, in the near future. But as I mentioned before, my daughter uh, is currently living overseas, so I'm planning a big trip this summer to go visit her. Okay, very much, very nice. And uh, same thing too, uh, Julie. What? Anything else on the agenda? Not yet. Um, I'm a full-time high school theater teacher. So once I wrap up Birds of North America, I'm looking forward to the school year ending. As much as I love my theater kids, um, I'm looking forward to a summer off. Do you have another theater play at the uh, high school? Anything for the remaining in, in the year? Or? Uh, no, we've wrapped all of that up for, for the year. Um, we have small show going on in about a week, just student written short plays. We did um, She Kills Monsters last fall. 
and we did a comedy murder mystery in March called Death of a Doornail, which was very fun. <laughs> Okay, great. Well, anyway, I'd like to thank both of you for being my guests this special Facebook Live edition of the Lane's World Show. And uh, John, one last time, we encourage people to come from any time from May 13th to the 22nd, is it? And the name That's of the right. show and the theater and the, and the website. So it's Birds of North America. It's at the Black Mountain Center for the Arts. And the website is blackmountainarts.org. Okay, I'll just encourage folks to get to see it because if you get a chance to see both John and Trinity together. That's have you guys ever been together in a show before? We have like not playing opposite each other for, you know, an hour and a half like this one, but uh, we were both in Jeeves and Bloom at NC State. Oh, that's right. Okay. Which playing was... father and daughter. <laughs> uncle. Uh, uncle. That's uncle. right. Uncle, uncle and niece. <laughs> Such a fun show, but to see the two of you on stage, just a real treat. So I'm looking forward to it. And anytime Julie directs, you're, you're guaranteed it's going to be a great show. Thanks guys. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Blaine. Thank you, Blaine. Okay.